Hi guys, Jay here, live vape and chill. Today, got a little video for you. That's not it, but anyway, let's get down to it. So, in the post, I got this um, cloned Avid Life Able Murdered Out mod. Um, so I'm going to do a little review on that and a little build on that today. And then um, uh, after I've done the build, I'm going to hit it up to show the cloud production on it. So without further ado, let's go down low. So here we go, going down low. Right. So, this is the little box that it came in. Um, so, inside we get the uh, spare screws, a couple of coils, a couple of our rings, and a screwdriver. We get the Hubble 2 cap, which is made of solid brass and it, it, it weighs some. It really does. It's crazy. We get the mod father cap, also solid brass, and the weight of these are just phenomenal. They're, they're solid, you know. They're, they're quite nice caps. We also get the, the tube with the sleeve, button, top deck there. So this is a uh, black version uh, murdered out by Comp Life. Well, it's not by Comp Life, it's a clone version of the Comp Life one. Um, you know, it's got the engravings on the top, AV, uh, engravings on the bottom, AV. It's got the gold writing on the top cap uh, of the mod. Uh, the mod itself is heavy. This is also made of solid brass. So it's solid brass coated in some sort of black coating. I don't know what coating they use, but it seems to be of a, a decent quality. Uh, you get a short throw switch. I don't know if you can see that there. Which is copper, so you just literally adjust it. And then... comes out. There's some magnets in there. These magnets are very strong uh, and I have a hard time getting them in and out without them flicking around. That's how strong they are. So I'm not going to take them out just because I don't want them to ping everywhere while I'm making the video. But the magnets in there are unreal. Um, then obviously you've got the sleeve. Aluminium sleeve. Uh, sort of sleeve that they make anyway is aluminium sleeves. It's quite light. But it's alley. And then we've got the actual tube itself, which is brass. Um, all in all, the threads on these are just like silky smooth. Look, there's no grinding, no crunching, no nothing. The threads on there are amazing. Um, I don't know the weights or the measurements. I haven't got a, a legit one to compare it with. Uh, but I am going to buy one. To be fair, I am going to buy an Able mod, but I just wanted to get one of these just just to see, like you know, it was a one-to-one -one clone. They said just to get the look and the feel and 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 the actual characteristics of it, just to see if I do like it. And so far, I'm actually loving it. The weight of this is unbelievable. Um, there is a deck that comes comes with it. Just um, what is this deck? This is. Give me a second, and I'll tell you exactly what it is. Oh, got all gear all over that. This is, does it say? I don't know what that. I can't actually read the writing on there, but it's a deck and it's got AV printed on the bottom. Um, there is some writing there, but I can't actually see it. My eyes are terrible, and the, the light shining on it at a funny angle. 
I don't want to get up. I did do a build on that, but that's just like a flavour sort of build. So I'm going to put that to one side because in the post also I got a battle deck. So this is a clone, battle deck clone, but I've I have actually seen the real thing up close and personal, and you know what? There doesn't seem to be a lot of difference, if I'm honest. The negative posts are milled into the deck itself. It's all got the, the writing inside. Comp life. Same on the bottom. It has got a made up serial number. Uh, center pin is copper. Copper screw, 510 screw. Center pin is copper. It's also got the different colored screws. Now this is how the originals come. And I haven't got one to compare it next to it, but I have I've held one up close and personal and it looks virtually the same. Like I only had it I held it a couple of, like a couple of days ago. So I did actually go and, to go and get an able um A V. But the shop where I went they had actually sold out and they said they're waiting for the next batch. So um this is an hybrid. If you lot not don't know what an hybrid mod mech mod is it's basically the centre pin on the deck touches the battery. There's no spring loadedness in between the battery. It's, it's an hybrid, so like you know that goes directly onto the battery there. And then at the bottom, like the way that it's sh um, shaped inside the bottom, when you push the hybrid top down onto the battery, it fits it snug against the the, the, the casing of the bottom button around here and then the centre pin is recessed and then all you do is just unscrew the firing switch out and then when you push it it pushes the recessed button, the copper button up to make the contact so that's how this works um, hybrids can be dangerous mechanical mods can be dangerous so unless you know what you're doing, I'd be very, very careful and read up on your Ohm's Law and battery powers and what build you can do for what your battery can handle. But one key thing to note with an hybrid, your centre pin on the hybrid must stick out further than the, the 510 thread itself. So this copper centre pin, it, it, it protrudes. See that? It sticks out. Ever so slightly, but if you get one that's flush, and you try and put it on a mechanical mod, you're going to create an instant short. And that's when you're going to start venting batteries. Um, so this came from a different place where the, the, the clone come from. They're both clones. But this deck came from a different place where I've got the, the um, actual mod from. But you know what? It actually fits on there lovely. It fits on there beautiful. That is nice. I'm liking it. So without further ado, I am going to get down and build on this. I don't know what it's going to come out at. I really don't. But what I'm going to be using today is uh, Twisted Clapton's, just because that's what I've got available and it's right here. I have got some 22 gauge here, but I don't really want to be using that at the moment. Um, in fact, or should I? No, I'm going to use this for now. So I've got um, 26 gauge Campfall A1. Uh, so it's Clapton's. You know what Clapton's are. And they're twisted together Clapton's. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using today. So without further ado. I'm going to start building on this. Just to let you know, the the, the deck, the holes in these posts are amazing. The holes are nice and big. The screws look nice. You know, it finishes it off like quite nice. It does actually look good. I'm surprised how good it actually looks for a replica. But the holes in there, they're th they're huge. Let me try and see what I can tell you about these hole sizes. I'll put a dowel in there. 
can do a rough idea. So, please just bear with me. Oh, there's a little bit of something in there. I don't know what that was, there's something in there. Alright. So I am going to get down to it and try and see what size these are. Okay, so they are that size. They might be slightly bigger, but they're about a 2, two millimeter hole in these. So I've got my, my coil winding tool and the 2mm one fits in there. There is a little bit of play, so it might be a little bit more than 2mm, but it's not quite 2.5mm, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought. Um, so let's have a quick look. Oh, no. I think it could be. That's a, that, oh my gosh. They are. They're 2.5 mil holes in there, so they're quite a big hole. You can get a nice, a nice, um, nice set of wires in there. So, without further ado, let me get my coil kit set up. So. I'm going to just wrap this up now. So I'm going to cut a length of this twisted cap cloth about there. So I've got my dial set up. Right, so this is my coil making tool. Don't use one of these, these are amazing. I do like to wrap things by hand, but it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more uniform uh, and quicker if we do it with this little jig thing. So I'm going to wrap them around a three millimeter dial. So I'm just going to put that in there. And basically all I'm going to do is three wraps. So three mil. So and in fact I'm not I'm going to go two point five mil. That is what I'm going to do. So let's go for the 2.5 mil one. Do apologise. So just going to shove my bit of cap in there. Hold it there with my thumb. Get the 2.5 mil. I'm just going to do three wraps, starting from this point here. So one. Two, three. That's it. That's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to cut this off. This is going to be a dual core build. I'm only just playing around just to see what we get from me. So now. So we've got the coil there. I like to put it on back on the bell and I get the long nose pliers and then basically I like to pull the legs to make sure the coils are nice and tight and formed around the dowel. There. So there. Then get a nice looking little twisted collecting coil there. So I'm going to make another one of them. Same thing again, put it, put it through the little hole that's there, hold it with your thumb. There's a little notch out there, it catches the cable or the, the wire and it pulls it round. So I'm going to start where my thumb is. So that's going to be when the, the little catch bit comes back to the top, that's one. So that's there, that's one, two, three. That's it. Back onto itself. 
leave a little bit of a leg, trim some of the excess off. I'm going to do the same again. Just going to keep it pouring out of here. Sometimes it can be difficult to get them out of there without deforming them. Okay. So I'm going to put this back on again. Same sort of thing. Pull the legs to make sure <laughs> that worked out very well. I've actually pulled it straight off. Don't try that at home. So I'm going to hold that and <laughs> let's go again. So when you do actually pull these legs, you've got to hold the opposite leg. If not, it'll unwrap itself. So that's all I'm doing there. That's it, nice and tight. So there's the second coil. So that's the pair of coils that we've got. I'm going to put these on the battle deck. So I'm just going to use my own reader as a stand. In fact, I could actually use this as a stand. So I've opened up the holes. Probably a little bit too much on this battle deck. So there's no way these are 2.5 mil. So I'm just going to put that inside there. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you guys, just so you can see what's going on now. There we go, it's really good clicking. Picture quality is not the best to be fair. But you sort of get the idea. So putting it through one side. I'm just gonna take my dowling, twist it up so that so the, the coil sits nice and level. This leg I'm gonna leave a little bit longer because I wanna bend it over this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a little kink in that there so it keeps it poorly formed. Let me use these actually. I've got a little kink there. And a nice little kink that way. So that'll move my coil over a piece that way. So it's not sitting too much towards the edge, it's sitting more or less central, oh that's lovely, sitting right over this, yeah that'll do really nicely. It's not dead central in the middle of the, the deck itself, but it's sitting towards the centre more, but it's only such a small coil. I'm going to screw these screws in. A little bit more. I know you can't really see what I'm doing right now, so I'm going to adjust the camera angle. So let me just adjust that back out for you guys. So, so yeah, I'm going to hold that there with my thumb. Tighten the negative leg post up tight. That's what I'm going to do. So that's tight. Yeah, that's nice and tight. I'm going to leave the centre leg where it is for a moment. And now I've tightened that first leg up, I'm going to trim that back so we haven't got to worry about that. That's trimmed right back, that's nice. So now, with this centre post leg, I'm just going to bend that to one side. So when I put the other leg through, it, it goes through nice. That's what I'm going to do on that. So I've got the other coil here. I'm just going to do the same sort of thing as what I did with the last one. I'm just going to put a little bend in it so it moves it over a little piece. Perfect. That's where that needs to be bent there. And then I'm going to grab that, bend it back that way there. So that's just so it gives it a bit of a shape, just so it moves it away. There. 
want to sign them out. I'm going to push that in to the magnet here. Oh my gosh, look, that's how strong the magnets are. It's picked a pair of long nose pliers up, and I can swing that around and they're on there. That's crazy. So I'll move that leg to one side, feed that through. That's lovely. That's great. So now I want to back in play. I'm going to tighten the negative leg up again. You can't really see what I'm doing there, but you get the gist of the idea. So that's set. That's tightened up really tight. You want these tight. Don't go so mad because the screws seem to be only anodized aluminium. And you don't want to strip the threads because the deck's like a steel deck and obviously steel stronger than aluminium so it will cause the threads to strip. Let's trim that, that negative leg back off. So now all we're left with is the two centre legs, uh, yeah the centre post legs that need to be tightened up and then we can start manipulating and moving around the coils and heating them up and bursting them. Right, so I'll just set that with my dial tool. Let me do the same with this as well. Set that sort of right, so it's nice. Okay, so that seems quite decent there. So now I'm just going to tighten this center post up. Do this tight. Oops, that was nice. These are not your usual cross-head screws. These are actually flat-head screws. This is old school. You don't really use flat-head screws around. And with these being aluminium, like I said, they are soft. But you get a nice tightness on them. So now they're tightened up. I'm going to trim these legs back, being careful not to trim the actual coil this side. So that one's quite a difficult one to get into. So I'm just going to move this coil out of the way. That's it. Oh, that's not good. Put that back. There we go, that's it. Let's move that away so now I can get in there and I can trim this down. Hopefully. I can't get in there so close. So I'm just going to work this backwards and forwards so it breaks it off. It's like wobbling out a loose tooth. There we go. That's off. That's done. And that's that's gone right, right back also. Uh, what that goes back there. Okay, this one, same sort of thing. Okay. I'm just going to move them backwards and forwards. I'm not going to try and get my cutters in there because I don't, don't want to cut the other leg to be fair because they're that close together. So, oh. that's the collecting screws right there. that that's done okay so now they're the coils just move them around a little bit to where I want them to sort of sit just to make sure that they're nice yeah they're nice and tight just go back over now I've moved that screw around I'm just gonna go back over and tighten these to make sure they're tight I will do that again after as well when I fire these up they seem tight enough So, 
Okay. So now that bit's done, let's put this on the under and see what we're getting. Go on, what do you think we're going to be getting? Have a quick guess before I turn it on. Okay. So we're getting a, a 0 0.14. It's not the lowest by no means, but it's, it's all right. It's going to be a nice hit on that, if I do say so. So now, I'm going to just put these on. I'm going to put this on my mod, just so I can get any hot spots out. Chances are that that arms reading will, will adjust when I sort of like manipulate these around a bit and heat these up and blast them. And, you know, right there. So we've got hot spots there, you can see that. So I'm just going to take my tweezers while it's glowing, twist them, squeeze them. And do the same on this side, there's a cool spot in the middle there. But now I'm just going to strike them out. Okay. That's quite nice. So I'm going to turn that up now to, I don't know. And we go 80 watts. One does seem to be going a little bit more than the other. I'll just sort that out. There we go. They're quite even. They're glowing nice, they're hot. They're quite central as well. They're quite, uh, no, no, they're not alive, they're not level. So let me just lift that one up a piece. So yeah, they're quite level now. I'm going to do what they know. Okay, so they're level side to side, they're level up and down, so they're, they're basically, they're, they're level this way, side to side, so they're, they're on a, a line level. They're, le they're basically level in every direction, so they're the same height as each other, the same level as each other, they're not tilted forward or backwards in any other way. Now, I'm going to take this off of there. Just going to stand it back on here again. And then we're going to whip this up and then hit this bad boy. So, today I'm using the cotton bacon, which coincidentally says, Not actual bacon, do not ingest. Do not use in a medical, do not use in a medical setting or situation. Yeah. A nice little warning there for you. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. Quite a nice fluffy gear. Just run my fingers over it like this, watch. Uh, it pulls off a nice little bit. You run your fingers over it and it just pulls off all the loose crap that you don't need. So now this is quite a big thick bit, actually. I don't know if it's going to get through there. So I'm just going to uh, work that little bit off. I'm left with a nice little fluffy bit. Twist it up. Trim a little bit of that wispy bit off there because it might go through the hole. Yeah. Push it through the hole, grab it the other side, give it a pull. 
there. So we've got a nice snug fitting right in the centre there. It's not too tight, but it's snug. So same with the other side. It's quite thick in that other side. Lower that down. There we go. So a nice bit there. Then again, you can either fold that over, roll it back in, or chop it off. So just give it that through. Then I pull it. Oh. There you have the snug bit right there. And just coincidentally, just trimmed it off more or less in this nice sort of space. So I'll get rid of all the wispy sort of bits. Now what I want to do is just fluff these up a little bit in the tweezers, make them nice and fluffy. I'm going to start tucking them in. So literally just tuck them in into the deck just so they sit on the bottom of the deck in the, the edges of the deck. You don't want them under the coils because then you will start disrupting the airflow. So I've put them in there, I've put my tweezers underneath, move it side to side. And it makes sure that there's a gap in the centre of the coil, underneath the centre of the coil. Same this side, tuck it in, nicely tuck it in. Get my tweezers, move it side to side like that. There. So. There we go. Right then. So that's that, pretty much coiled up. There's a gap under each coil, so when I put the caps on, the holes will go directly over the coils. Bang, so it'll allow airflow to go all under the coils to come out. So that that just feels so great. If you make the weight of this is just phenomenal, it's so heavy. So that's pretty much that bit. So I'm gonna take you back up top and we are going to uh, juice this up, insert a battery and then we're going to hit this <coughs> so there we go uh, what juice shall I use? what shall I use? I'm going to use a bit of loaded glazed donuts, my favourite juice I've got to say so I'm just going to saturate these, these wicking hot and nice Got a nice big bit on the top there. Let it soak in. When you wick your, when you're saturating for the first time, you need to take your time to make sure you get them saturated and there's no actual dry cotton left. Because the last thing you want to be doing is getting them dry here. So I can see now that that okay that is all wicked up lovely. Just going to leave that to soak in for a second. I'm going to give this a test pulse fire. So with these hybrid caps, what you do, you stick your deck fully on. So the bottom pin, pin pokes out the bottom. Then you get your battery. Stick your battery in. Then you put the top bit back on. And then you do it just so you can feel the tension there. I felt the tension there, and I'm just going to give it a little nip, not too much, because then you start, like you know, damaging the batteries and stuff. So just a little nip. That's it. So I'm going to undo the bottom. Yeah, test firing. It's not, it's not the best build in the world, I've got to be honest. It's just a quick build that I could get in there easy just to show you guys. And then I'm going to hit this just to let you guys see how it hits. So now, that's that's been set for a few seconds, juicing up, soaking in. So now I'm just going to really juice this up. Let it sit in there for another second or so. 
See, the well on this is quite big as well, and it's, it's just a nice dish. So what you can do, where your cotton is down into the sides, you can actually put a decent amount of juice in the well. Look, that's holding itself up in the firing buttons out, by the way. That's how strong the magnets are. So it holds itself up. So yeah, as I was saying, the the well, the dish is quite, the juice well is quite quite big. So you, as long as you make sure that your cotton goes in, it don't go into the bottom and start folding in on itself. What you want to do is cut it so it just touches the bottom around the edges. So say that's your thick, thick deepness of your well. You cut your cotton so it just touches the bottom there. You don't want it all folding in on itself because that will defeat the object. You don't wick properly that way. So cut it so it fits in nice. And then what you can do, you can actually, in the center there, you've got a gap. You can actually juice that right up in the center. Bang. And then that will juice the whole well up. So you get a good few hits from that. That's the way that I do it anyway. So I'm going to use this mod, for, mod barber cap. That fits on there so nice. It just looks gorgeous I've got to say it you know the weight of it is nice so let's just hit this up on the first hit let's have a look nice the flavour in that is just immense oh my gosh Flavor is banging. The juice, I love it. The flavor is awesome on this. This build, yeah, okay. It's coming in at zero point one four. It's not the lowest build, and it's not by no means cloud competition sort of stuff right you know they're building at a 22 gauge dual dual wraps dual coils you know and they're coming in at 0 0.02 so i'm one i'm 0 0.012 higher than competition sort of stuff um but you know it's flavor so it's nice giving a nice production of the vape That's nice. It's really good. So, anyway, guys, that's the Able AB Murdered Out clone. So, for now, take it easy. Thanks for tuning in and vape on. Live vape and chill. Peace out.